All right, next up, we're going to look at the beginning stages of the digestive system, the mouth, pharynx, and esophagus. So we're going to start off with the mouth, which is just the oral cavity and everything found within. This is going to be responsible for receiving food and beginning mechanical and chemical digestion. Now the roof of the mouth is going to be separate is going to separate the nasal cavity from the oral cavity, and it's made up of two parts: a bony hard palate and a soft palate back here. The soft palate is made out of muscle and it ends in the back with a uvula. The tonsils are also going to be found in the back of the mouth on either side of the tongue. The lymph, these are going to be made out of lymphatic tissue. This is going to help us protect against from disease um, that is coming in through the mouth and nasal passageways. There is also a, ser a single pharyngeal tonsil in the na nasopharynx. It's also often commonly referred to as the adenoids that are also going to help protect against infectious diseases coming in through the nose and mouth. There are three pairs of salivary glands that are going to be found throughout the mouth. Now these glands secrete saliva, which is going to contain salivary amylase. That is what's going to be responsible for beginning uh, carbohydrate digestion, breaking down those carbohydrates into simple sugars, um, individual molecules of glucose. The tongue yeah, oh, I'm sorry, and it also contains, saliva also contains lysozyme, which is an antibacterial enzyme um, that's, again, going to help protect us against diseases and foreign invaders coming in through our mouth. The tongue is going to be covered in taste buds. Now, the tongue is going to be responsible for assisting in the mechanical breakdown um, and movement of food. So the tongue is going to be responsible for forming a bolus, which is just a mass of chewed food, and then pushing it backward towards the pharynx. Next up, we have the teeth inside of the oral cavity. So we have the tongue that's responsible for moving the food, but we also have the teeth in the mouth that are responsible for mechanically digesting that food. We have 20 smaller deciduous or baby teeth and 32 adult teeth. Now, there are going to be two main divisions to each tooth. There's going to be the crown and the root. The crown is going to be the portion of the tooth above the gum line. So here's the gum line. This is the portion that you can see. The root is going to be the portion below. Now, surrounding the tooth, we're going to see a layer of enamel. Enamel is an extremely hard outer layer. Within that, we have what is known as dentin. Dentin is going to be a thick layer of bone-like material. The innermost area is going to be what is known as the pulp. This contains the nerves and the blood vessels. When you lose a tooth, especially when you're losing your baby tooth and it bleeds, it's because the tooth is breaking off um, at the root. Or even if it's being pulled out completely from a dentist, you might see the root in the tooth, in which case you're severing these blood vessels and nerves uh, down here, which is why it's so painful when a tooth gets removed. Periodontal membranes are going to anchor the tooth to the jawbone. So that's going to be this periodontal membrane right here. It's going to help hold our teeth in place. Now there are a couple of homeostatic imbalances that are associated with the teeth and mouth. Uh, one of those would be uh, dental caries. This is, in other words, tooth decay or cavities. This occurs when bacteria metabolize sugar and produce acids which erode the teeth. So it's not the sugar that's rotting out your teeth, but it's the bacteria in your mouth who are eating that sugar and then excreting acidic wastes that are eating away at your enamel. It can be very painful if that uh, decay reaches the pulp of the tooth or reaches the nerves in the pulp of the tooth. There's also gingivitis. Gingivitis is inflammation of the gums, um, which can spread to the periodontal membrane, causing the loosening of those teeth. All right, next up we have the pharynx and esophagus. So now we are moving backwards from the mouth into the rest of the uh, rest of the oral cavity or and uh, digestive system. So the mouth and nasal passages lead to the pharynx. In turn, the pharynx is then going to open into both the food passage, which is the esophagus, and the trachea. Now these two tubes are parallel to each other. Um, the esophagus with the trachea in front of the esophagus. So here's our air passageway and the esophagus right behind it. The esophagus is a muscular tube that leads down into the stomach. So swallowing is the process by which we move food from the oral cavity down into the stomach. It starts off initially voluntary, but once food or drink is pushed back to the pharynx, so once we get to about here, 
the uh, it becomes an involuntary reflex that's going to take over and move that food through the digestive system. Food normally enters the esophagus because the other possible avenue is going to be blocked. The epiglottis, when you begin the swallowing, um, the soft palate is going to move back to close off the nasal passageway. So this is your soft palate. It's going to move up, block off your nasal passageway. And um, the trachea is going to move up under the uh, epiglottis to cover the glottis. So this epiglottis is going to slam shut and um, it's going to close off the larynx. And so the only possible avenue for that food is going to be to go down the esophagus. So here's our soft palate. It's going to slam upward, sort of like a trap door, blocking off the nose. Um, the epiglottis is going to slam downward, blocking off the, the trachea and the food is going to slide down the esophagus. Once we pass through, um, through the mouth, into past the pharynx, into the esophagus, we're going to undergo a process known as peristalsis. Peristalsis is the contractions that push the food through the digestive tract. So what happens is uh, we have sort of this wave-like motion of... Um, of this smooth muscle in the esophagus that's going to push just behind the bolus and move that bolus down into the stomach. Now, right here, right at the base of the esophagus and the opening of the stomach, we have what is known as a sphincter. A sphincter is going to be a ring of muscle that acts as a valve. When it contracts, it stops food from moving through. And when it relaxes, it's gonna open up and allow food through. So the lower esophageal sphincter is going to be the muscle or the valve between the esophagus and the stomach. Um, there are a couple of homeostatic imbalances that are associated with this sphincter, heartburn being the most common one. This is the failure of the sphincter. So the stomach contents can actually move upward from the stomach into, whoops, from the stomach into the esophagus. So the sphincter doesn't close completely or it um, relaxes and food actually pushes back up. Um, stomach acid pushes back up through the esophagus. Vomiting is when strong contractions of the abdominal muscles and the diaphragm, so the muscles separating the thoracic and abdominal cavities, force the contents of the stomach into the esophagus and oral cavity. So those abdominal contractions can become so strong that they actually push the food and the contents of the stomach out of the stomach, past that sphincter, and up and out of the mouth. All right, so you should be able to describe the role of the mouth, pharynx, and esophagus in digestion, detail how mechanical digestion and chemical digestion occur in the mouth. I do want you to know both the mechanics and the chemicals that are involved in digestion upward and up in the mouth, um, and then explain what ordinarily prevents food from entering your nose or trachea when you swallow. So you should um, understand the process of swallowing and how we can prevent um, food going where it shouldn't.